Greetings, fellow investigators, and welcome to our video podcast, Into the Darkness, where my friends and I play the Call of Cthulhu role-playing game. I'm your host, Tom Rayleigh. Tonight, we are taking a break from our regular game and interjecting a scenario that should take us a few weeks. It's called The Burning Stars. It was written by David Conyers, and it can be found in Terrors from Beyond. Our game master is Matthew Sanderson, and this is episode one. So without any further delay, let's begin our journey into the darkness. Matthew? Thank you very much, Tom. We're not going to dive into introductions. We're going to just throw you straight into the middle of what's going on. You're in a room. It's rectangular. There are six beds, three on one side, three on the other. Doors at one end, windows at the other. A fan just turns very slowly and almost completely ineffectually from the ceiling and provides, well, hardly any breeze at all. Somewhere off in the distance, you can hear the sound of a city, perhaps, some kind of vehicles. There's people bustling, moving around, the occasional honk of a horn. And through the slat windows, there is just oppressive heat coming into the room. Uh, you all feel your clothes. And in fact, as you look down and look around you, uh, the pajamas that you're wearing are almost drenched with sweat. Uh, some of you are stood in the room. You can decide whereabouts you want to be. Others are laying down in bed. Some are sitting on the um, on the bed. But otherwise, you have two uh, two women and four men. So all wearing the same kind of standard issue pajamas, and you have no idea how the hell you got here. What do you do? What are the windows barred? Right. Let, let's say you're over by the window then having a look. Yeah. Now, they are a wooden slatted affair. Um, you can see through them, so there's no glass here at all. It's just this uh, uh -huh. kind of heat that's coming in through them. But it looks out onto what seems to be some kind of interior courtyard. Uh, there's fairly manicured um, grass that's there. Uh, you can also give me a natural world roll. Well, that's an 80. Okay, there's some kind of vegetation out there. You're not familiar with it. It's green and hot. Yep, it, it's hot and it seems, to, it seems to be whatever's out there is doing fairly well in the heat. Um, you can see what seem to be hospital orderlies uh, moving around out there, attending to some of the grass. Uh, there's other figures out there wearing similar kind of pajamas to yourself. Uh, some sat in wheelchairs, some sat on benches, seemingly passing the time of day. Um, it feels like morning. It doesn't feel like it's particularly late in the day, maybe from the angle the sun's coming down. But wherever you are, it's hot. And there's no wrist bracelet or anything? Oh, yeah. If you look on your wrist, you do indeed find a wrist bracelet. Uh -huh. um, it has your name on there. And it has a date as well. Uh, it says that your date of admission is... Should have had this bookmarked. Uh, it has a, your name, so confirms your name, so Kessler, comma, Dirk. Uh, there's a patient ID number. It's not, there's no hidden secret in what the number is, it's just a number. And then date of admission, Tuesday, October 28th, 1930. 30, 1930? Mr. Sterling, are you here? Yeah, I'm here. I got a goddamn headache. Find out where the hell we are. I, I don't understand what's going on. I'm going to go over to where he is. Mm -hmm. I'm sitting over on the bed holding my head. Boy, are you... Oh, I recognize some of you. I don't know who you are or you. Um, Amy? Yeah. Did, Donna? What, what's, what's, yeah, what's, is that what's, you? What's going on? Uh, who are these men? Amy. Who, I don't know where we are, how we got here. Matt, do I, we remember our lives? Um, things are a little fuzzy. Uh, you have the details that have been provided to you in your in your background. Okay. Um, but the date seems a lot uh, further in advance to what you yeah. thought it was. You thought it was earlier in October. It's not the end of the month as far as you were concerned. Guy, what's the last thing you remember? 
the last thing I remember. Yeah. I guess I went to bed. Huh. Okay. Who, who are you well, guys? Where in the blazes are we? No idea, but, and I stand up. I'm James Sterling of the New York and uh, 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 wherever, Sterling's. I'm sure you know the name. Who, who are you guys? Where are we? Uh, you know, why are as in the dark as you are, uh, Sterling? I don't, uh, you know, my best guess was that we've all been in some kind of accident. Uh, are we entry? You don't appear to be. Uh, where the hell are my clothes? Is yeah. there a closet or anything in the room where clothes would be put? Um, nope. I'm going straight to the door. Okay. Uh, you head to it. It's a fairly sturdy wooden door, and it is very firmly locked. Bang, 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 bang on the door. See if there's a nurse button or something before you make a racket. There doesn't appear to be one. Making a racket's my job. <laughs> so Donna, were we patients or prisoners? Donna, who are these men? I I don't know. I'm, I don't, I'm just sort I don't of remember anything. <laughs> I'm just sort of sitting in, in one of the beds, sort of looking around like I'm missing something, but I'm not quite sure what it is. So no, I I I, I don't know. What, I was hoping maybe you did. I mean, it's, it's good to see you, but I, I don't, I, I can't remember. It's, <laughs> it's the 30th already? I, well, no, let's I follow Mr. Sterling uh, 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 and introduce the, ourselves. The 30th is when we were admitted. How long the hell have we been here? 28th was when you were admitted. Oh, okay. Uh, can I, um, can I check myself for injuries or cuts or lesions or anything injections yeah, sure. it's it's easy oh, enough yes. to, it's easy enough to pull aside the pajamas in various places you you give yourself a thorough looking over um as far as you can tell nothing is physically wrong with you i'm going to pull the is the bracelet like plastic i don't know if they have plastic yeah, it'd probably be more like a strong paper Okay. Or thick paper. Um, is it what I'm thinking is I pull it off and try to use it to hook the lock inside and pull the lock open <laughs> like a credit card. But if it's not that strong, then I wouldn't I wouldn't use it. It, it also seems to be a uh, lever lever bolt door. Oh, so that wouldn't they All nice right. plan, but would not work with the type of lock. All right, a barrel lock. That's what I was getting. What? Does everybody have the same date? Check your check your wrists. Yeah, I'm the 28th. October same. 28th. Yeah. You are we all the have, same. All well, that's same that's our admission together. date. What? What's yeah. today's date? Is there, is there is there a chart on the bed? Yeah. Just and there's just no the apparatus. Room. There's not an IV drip stand or anything. It's just a empty room. Correct. I'll go over to the wooden slats at the nearest window and see if I can pull them off. Okay, yeah, you can you can give me a strength roll. Out of 59 out of 80. Okay, um, yeah, you start to disassemble the window. Um, at which point there's a voice that just suddenly comes out of nowhere um, in the corner of the room where you don't even didn't even notice that there was a chair there. And there's a man sat there that's dressed very much like myself. He's dressed in a linen suit, uh, Panama hat, glasses, uh, holding what seems to be a notebook that he just gets, uh, kind of leans forward a bit and says, um, I'd probably prefer, I'd prefer it if you didn't do that. We, we don't want to have to repair the, uh, have to repair the window. Um, Sterling suddenly finds that you're stood up and on the other side of the room. Um, Kessler's over by the door and you, you are in different parts of the room, just like that. It's a little bit disorientating. Just sit down. Is the man still here? Yeah, he's still there. I'm going to get between uh, uh, Mr. Sterling and that man. Listen, buddy, what the hell's going on here? Well, um, you're in the Elmwood Military Hospital. It's a US military hospital. Uh, you've been here for a few days now, and you've been suffering from blackouts the hell I have. 
Oh, I think you were just saying that you had you just experienced one. Where is this hospital? Where are we? Uh, Port-au-Prince. Port-au-Prince? Hey. Yeah. How did we get here from New York? Well, as, as far as we understand, you arrived about a week ago. All of us together. What is today's date? Uh, Kessler can give me a psychology roll. Thirty-eight. That's good. Regular. You. He suddenly has an expression. He's trying to keep a relatively uh, good poker face. So you, you get the impression maybe he's some kind of psychiatrist. Mm -hmm. But the mask slips a little bit at that point, and there's just this confused look on his face when you say that. But then he turns back to Sterling. What, what was your question again? What is today's date? Uh, Thursday the thirtieth. You've been uh, you've been here for two days. Well, guy, we're going to miss Halloween in the city. Yeah, um, I'm. Look, I'm not buying any of this. But buying any of what? Well, I had no plans to go to Haiti. How, how did we arrive here? Did, did someone bring us? Did we walk in? Uh, well, you were found um, on the outskirts of town two days ago um, by some of the locals. It seemed like you'd had, or at least you'd been out there for a fair while. I mean, uh, small like, bruises, small cuts, um, stuff that's it's long, it's healed now, but it seemed like you'd been outside and suffering from exposure. Um, there's... We've got various theories about what potentially could have happened, but I don't want to go into, into details because it might influence you recalling what actually happened. We don't want to put suggest we don't want to put suggestions into your into your head. Uh, I start waving my hand. Listen here. Give me the bill. I'll pay for these two gentlemen too. We're getting the hell out of here. Where are our clothes? Oh, Where's we, my gun? We've, uh, we've got well, the clothes that you were wearing, we've uh, we've had to take away and, and wash them. Um, but otherwise, all your rest of your possessions, we believe, are still being kept at the uh, the Hotel Olofsson. It's where that you'd originally checked in, and you've paid for a couple of weeks for a uh, couple of weeks in advance. So all your possessions are still there. Uh, who paid? We paid individually. Again, this look kind of comes over him for a second, and then it it passes. Um, well, the the group, he just shrugs. Boss, and, we got to get out of here. Uh, what, and what about passports uh, and plane tickets? Is that all? Uh, you know, you spoke to the hotel. Oh, I'm you, sorry. You, Who are we addressing? Are you a doctor, an officer? Uh, the, there's a look of uh, suddenly, kind of. Oh, uh, he he deflates a little bit, as if you've, as if he was hoping for something, and then it's evidently become real, uh, become obvious to him that it's not happening. Uh, he sighs and says, uh, "My name's Dr. Alan Kelly." Uh, I've been looking after you for the last couple of days, but it seems like you obviously are not aware of that fact. I was, I was rather hoping we were making some kind of progress that you might be able to remember more of the, uh, more of the past few days. Well, Dr. Kelly, are we here voluntarily? Well, my, my superiors, like I said, this is a, this is a military hospital. Um, that are connected with the ONI are very interested in uh, asking you a few questions and they've uh, it's basically my orders to make sure that you are in a compass mentor state before they have a word with you and then see about what potentially they can do about discharging you but like I said this is a military hospital this is not somewhere where you can just walk out of unfortunately do you have a phone Half no, of we, this we military have... base is probably bought from my company. I own this damn place. I, we're going. Let's get out of here, gents and ladies. And I stand well, up and I walk towards the door. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm afraid the guards will have something to say about that, sir. Mm. Make a little call to Washington and we'll have all of you in the... We're trying to find a phone, but they're not going to let us talk on a phone, apparently. Oh, oh wait till I get it. You know, we can't just go out the window. I can break that window. If you then want to get past the 10-foot wall uh, topped with uh, topped with glass shards, 
and the ro- and the roving patrols, then you're willing to you're willing to have a go at it if you wish. But who's in charge here? It's who's in charge? Bring them uh, my, here. My immediate superior is uh, Major Medwin. I can I can see if I can arrange a meeting. Absolutely, as soon as possible. Ten seconds. Uh, give me a persuade or intimidate role. <laughs> <laughs> 92. Apparently, Push, I'm, I'm just don't do it in my pajamas. Push it. Yeah. <laughs> He's, he, he nods, kind of almost uh, patronizingly. Says, I'll, I'll see what I can do, sir. And a copy of the New York Times and cappuccinos for all of us. It's been well, days we are a, we to check the we, markets. We are a little bit off the beaten track. I mean, I can get you a copy of the, uh, the local papers. Guys, I don't think he knows anything. I think that that something we must have gotten screwed up in. I'd like to see a copy of the paper. Uh, sure, I'll get you a. I'll get you a copy. Matt, I is you there one in English? So, so sir? is it in French or English? Uh, there, are, there is an English paper. Okay, thank you. Um, at which point, he he looks as though he's about to um, about to ask something is if he's got a question on the tip of his tongue but he he kind of bites it and you can evidently see he stop he forces himself to stop us saying what he was about to so of this group you two gentlemen there i don't know who you are what what are you are you businessmen uh uh you know uh Guy and I uh, are both uh, licensed private investigators from the city of New York. Private investigators, from and New I York. can vouch for him. Miss, you, you, yes, you've and, you've and surely vice, heard of vice. Sterling mentioned New York. You, you've mentioned Sterling, haven't? I mean, you 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 know who Sterling is, right? He's a rather prominent industrialist. I'm his bodyguard. Uh, uh, O'Neill, my son. Something with my son. You were you were concerned over your son, yes, and I, I had medication for your headaches, but I don't have anything now. You were all from New York. We came here together. Was your son in some kind of scrape that you might call a private investigator about? I, I mean, it makes sense now. I, maybe I hired you to come with, to. But why would we? We're, 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 some I know something's wrong with my son, but that's all I know. I mean, it seems like we were in a plane crash, but not if we checked into a hotel. So we came here for help with our blackouts or amnesia, but we've now blackout or can't remember any of the treatment we've gotten here. I mean, it just seems like rather convenient. We got to talk to somebody in charge. He, so uh, he he hasn't left the room at this point, as you've been talking between yourselves. He has been cause, sitting there avidly writing in his notebook and looking up at you occasionally. Um, and the, in, the intensely focused on what you're saying. Would you please go get your superiors? We need to sort this all out. Oh, yeah, yeah so, sorry. Yes, yes, yes. I'll, uh, I'll go to uh, get to that right away. And he closes the book, puts it in his pocket, and then heads to the door, unlocks it, steps outside, relocks it, and then you can hear him walking away. Did he have a ring of keys or just one key? It'd be a ring. So he'd have uh-huh. access to multiple rooms here. Uh, and, you know, Guy, and I'm sorry, bodyguard, I didn't get your name. Uh, Sean, Sean O'Neill. Mm, Mr. O'Neill. Well, we know how to get out of here when he comes back if we... Uh, are detained well, reasonably. It's probably best if we don't stir up any hornets' nests. Maybe. I mean, a military facility if he's on the on the level. And what yeah. does naval intelligence want about us? Well, he Maybe says just, it's a military hospital. Might be the only yeah. hospital in the area. Something happened to us, apparently. I'm going to go and stand by the window, mm-hmm. and just you know, add, while continuing the conversation with the others, I'll just be sort of aimlessly looking out of the window. Mr. Sterling, why don't you sit down here? Can I see yeah. Can I see any guards? Uh, yeah, because now that there's a great big uh, called wider hole in it, as uh, one of the slats has been pulled apart, 
Yeah, um, you can indeed, when you look outside, see there are people in military uniforms. There's only a handful of them because this looks like it's an interior courtyard, not the exterior of the building that you're looking out at. But yeah, you do see people walking past in what looks to be military uniform and they are armed. Well, I guess that bit of his story checks out, but look, I'm, I'm no head shrinker, but I've, I've got to say that the chances of two people having amnesia at once is astronomical. Six people? It's got to be drug induced. people all having amnesia? That's, 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 that's something crazy. I've heard of. Yeah. Drug, in, drug induced, if anything. No, I, I'm, I'm wondering if ONI is, uh, you know, screwed up some test with some nerve agent or something. But why? What? Christ, we're thousands of miles from where we well, should be. Well, and that's uh, Mr. Sterling, your your troubled son, yeah. if I may presume. Do Do you have any reason to think that he would be in Haiti, that you recall? I I, I can't remember at all. It's, I just I know something is devilishly wrong with him right now. Do shut out of here, and I'm sure I've hired both of you to help me. Whatever I'm paying you, I'll double it. We need to get out of here and figure out what's going on. So consider your pay doubled at this point. I'm sure Matt, you're good for it. Um, do we We're have to any how last? Much you were paying us. We'll figure it out. I'll. I trust me. I, you will be rewarded more than handsomely. Do we have any last memory, like in the back of a limousine in New York City or anything like that? It would all be in New York, um, any fragments of memory that you've got. But it's it's frustrating that the moment you try and focus in on the last solid fact that you can remember, it just like, floats away from you. Hmm. Uh, pretty much as, um, I can't remember who said it, uh, was the, the last thing you can really concretely remember was going to bed in New York. But that was towards the beginning of the month. Weeks. We've been here for a week and we flew. That's crazy. Um, uh, pardon uh, our manners and our mode of dress, ladies. Uh, I'm uh, I'm Dirk Kessler, and you're part of this family, or? Yeah, I'm, I'm Donna. Uh, Amy, friend of the family. Uh, Both very good friends of the family, and this is my best friend right here. And if we were going all the way to Port-au-Prince to look for James's son, why would we bring Amy and Donna along? No. Yeah. Jack. Seems a very His reasonable question. Jack. Jack? How old is Jack? Uh, keeper? He's out of college. Uh, he would be kind of comparable age to looking quickly uh, to Donna. Donna. Okay. So, however old Donna is, similar age. Any other or kids? Around twenty. Yeah. He's, he's, he's got to be in his twenties. Early twenties. I have a daughter and a wife at home. I need to call my wife. You brought home. one daughter, but not the other one. She's All in right. school. Uh, wow. that, there is only the one daughter. There is only Donna yeah. and Jack. Yeah. Those are the two kids. Are you sure you didn't? Did you send him to, to Haiti to, on one of your, you know, business, one of you know, one of your new, you know, you know, pressing matters, you know, that you sent him off to? I just know he's in trouble. I can't think of any reason that boy would come out to here to Haiti. Do you don't have any businesses normally in Haiti, Sterling? I mean, I basically. It's petroleum and munitions and weapons. All right, so you're all over the place. Yeah, Central America, South America, Europe. The That's whole surely they, they don't need to know all of the details. Remember, we don't know these people really yet. I mean, it's in any newspaper on any given day. Well, at, at the moment, we're just taking stabs in the dark. One thing that the interests me though mr sterling you i take it you've employed private detectives before correct so 
why would you employ us and not someone you've already had experience of? You must have specialties that were needed. Are any of you good in an island setting or in the water, in jungles? What would your speciality be? Nope. Maybe yeah. you did employ them before, and we just don't remember that right. Well, I was, I was born and bred in New York. I was, before I did this, I was a, a cop. I mean, I, I, I know the Bowery like the back of my hand, but Haiti, there's, I've got nothing to recommend me for a job like this. Well, I assume neither one of you mind getting your hands dirty, and I only hire the best in research. It's quite possible that you hired our firm before and just not us individually. You know, oh, Shaw's gives I us a guess. pretty good rating. Yes, it could be. My head is killing me. I have this me too. very strange, if I had the medication, I could help you both. But both have the I same have, kind of headache? I, I'm, I'm prone to headaches. I get them all the time. I have this... Uh, this nagging feeling. I, I can't put words to it. It's, it's almost like there must have been some sort of confrontation or something, something, something's trying to kill us, but I, I can't us. remember. It's just, it's like fragments of a thought. Oh, Neil, he, he needs to be rescued. Uh, he, he needs to be rescued. Uh, at the moment, we need to be rescued, too. Mr. Sterling, could this be over money? Maybe everything. they want... Somebody uh, wants money? in life is over money, my dear. Everything. Well, it wouldn't make much sense yes, to... Yes, I agree. ...to ransom the boy for money and then drug us all. Do you, any of you remember our friend, the doctor, coming into this room? Never seen him before. Do no, it was like I blinked and he was there. Yeah. So I don't I, even remember waking up. All I remember whatever, yeah, is I don't whatever drugs they're giving us. Whatever here. drugs they're giving us, or I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, uh, it's not like well, you know, I I read before. in I read in National Geographic about a, a a drug, but I think it was in South America or Central America or somewhere. There was some seed that they make the drug out of that that makes people um suggestible well, I mean, but well I but I, I think i heard that too scopolamine i think it was called well that yeah i mean uh we're but, in haiti uh, are they making us into zombies uh, gee, you can't really believe that haitian I zombies I feel like a zombie i don't know there's a long tradition of haitian zombies I don't What's necessarily think that they're undead, but What's I do next? think they're mentally controlled. Well, you What's never, you never know what kind of you never know what kind of stuff's coming Donna, out of the jungle. Donna, someone some... might have found some new tree or plant or something out there. Maybe small doses of curare or something like that. But... Uh, this room doesn't have any ventilation system except for the slat windows, right? Pretty much, it's, it's I, completely open to the air in that respect. Very hot. And there's any. a fan. Is it like just much. plaster and wood? Uh, pretty much. Um, it's probably more a combination of stonework on the outside. Um, but the interior walls would probably be more wooden and plaster, yeah. yeah. Can we turn up the fan? Uh, yeah, you can turn it up a little bit, and it does provide a little bit more of a breeze. Circulating the hot air. I'm going to pull my, I don't know if I have sleeves on the pajamas, but I want to see if there's any track marks. Are they injecting us with something? You do not appear to have been injected with anything. Makes do more we sense have shoes be... on or are we barefoot? You'd be slippers rather than barefoot. They won't allow you to run around barefoot in this place. Mr. Sterling, let me check something. I'm going to check between your toes. You got it. That's uh, sometimes a place where druggy, drug people can administer yeah, drugs. We've been to Chinatown. Likewise, likewise down the uh, the corner of the eye, um, any of the places where you would expect someone to try and hide track marks, there is nothing there. All right. Hey, hey, Kessler, come here a minute. I do a little of a, a little me, toe. Let me look at your eyes. 
I'm just gonna I'm gonna look at his pupils. Are they dilated? Uh, there's no sign of drug use that way either. Um, so it's not like he's drunk anything. So his, his eyes appear normal. Where is that little rat? I don't. I don't feel. I don't feel groggy or anything. I mean, other other than the, the memory loss, there's no grogginess. There's no hangover. No, there's there's no sign of um, any intoxication. So it's not like you've got a hangover. Um, if anything, right. you've maybe a slightly dehydrated, um, but and maybe slightly hungry. But beyond that, nothing that seems to strike you as abnormal. Are there bedpans under our cots? Uh, yes, there will be. Uh, are we um are we on, on the first on the ground level yes yeah i'm gonna go over to the window and if i see anybody i'm gonna say hey you come over here um okay give me a luck roll uh oh nine okay um your choice then do you want an orderly a soldier or another patient it's an or order, orderly yeah okay Yep. Yeah, in which case, then uh, you uh, you see a um, a fairly well built uh, black lady comes okay. over, uh, uh, wearing just white uh, kind of white clothing. Uh, hey, sweetheart, uh, we're kind of stuck in this room. Uh, we can't get out. Could you come around and unlock the door for us. Uh, she gets. Uh, she comes. Starts getting closer and closer. Um, you're kind of talking to her through this uh, hole that you've uh, ripped right, in the right. um, in the shading, and she gets within a couple of uh, maybe uh, three or four feet, and then she's got this kind of smile on her face, and she looks quite quite friendly. She looks like she's uh, willing to help, and then just she stops in her tracks. Um, she's carrying this tray that's got uh, what looks to be a set of drinks on it that she's been handing out to a few of the people that were sat on some of the benches. Uh, she drops it as her eyes go wider than you've seen eyes could possibly go. And she just goes almost as white as a sheet. She, her lips start trembling. She backs away shaking and she mutters something under her breath. Uh, you can, in fact, anyone that's near the window can give me a combination role of listen and French. So it has to pass the lower of the two. Oh, I do have French. A little bit. Oh, no. The fuck? Uh, I passed I don't, French. I don't have French. Can I still listen? Uh, you can You can hear the short phrase, but if you pass your listen roll, but then trying to understand what it means is going to be even much harder. It just sounds like Julie, Julie, I a, Julie, Julie. I got a hard success in French. Okay, and that's also a pass under your listen as well. Oh, sorry. I, I apologize. No, it's the one role you look at both uh, both skill levels, so it pass it has to pass the lower of the two. Yes, it it, it passes both. Okay, so one person definitely catches it. Anyone else? I, I made my listen, but failed the French. Okay, I so could spend have... three, but it looks like I see comprehension on her face. Mm -hmm. I just heard an every... indistinct muttering. Yeah, every, everyone else just hears this terrified muttering. I mean, she is absolutely shaken to her core terrified um and amy hears uh, her just muttering baron lacroix has marked you sir and then she just turns and runs what the fuck did she say baron lacroix has marked you who the hell's baron lacroix what a cult if you've got <laughs> it you can make a roll yes well i've got five <laughs> Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh -huh. Tom knows, but plenty of luck on that. Tom knows, but Sean doesn't. Uh, I have an extreme success. I rolled a three. <gasps> nice. Oh, in which case, then you would be aware, Baron Lacroix, another name for Baron Samadhi, the voodoo master of the dead and keeper of cemeteries. Yeah, uh, friends, uh, I was kidding about voodoo, but uh, that nurse ain't. Uh, <laughs> Lacroix at the cross is Sunday, Saturday. He's like the scariest of the voodoo loa. Uh, what was that seed? Scopolamine? Yeah, that's that's this stuff. And, Some and tree or Mr. Fruit Mr. Or Castle, you might as well be speaking French because I don't understand what? a word of what you're saying. So, yeah, in, in Haitian voodoo, they got a bunch of like saints for lack of a better, and they have different specialties. 
uh, and they have ceremonies and people get possessed. You know, they have trance nonsense. Uh, and I think that's, that Lacroix is the one that wears a top hat and has a skull for a face. How, uh, when, when someone is marked, is it, is it visible? Do we have marks? Look at our face. Yeah, do, the, those of us who know each other, do we look different to each is other? This, is this okay. like a voodoo pattern on my pajamas? That's, what the fuck is going on? Right. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, unless... You, uh, so she was coming over, friendly. It's not like we're in the special marked room for... She got right up to me, took a look into my eyes, and then suddenly said that and ran away. And I'm like, damn it, I almost had her opening the door for us. Yeah, but you her can, eyes look all right. You can, give me a retroactive, you can give me a retroactive spot hidden roll if you're trying to think about what exactly she did when she walked up to the window. I got a 58 out of 60, so barely passed. She got close enough to see not just you, but everyone else in the room. Huh. Yeah, I mean, she could see us all for that moment. She was right up to my face, practically. Okay, okay, listen. She did Let's... say you, sir, though. Like, like she was talking to you. These people are superstitious. Let's say, before this all happened, we were at some voodoo chief guy's place, and we were seen in his company. And now we're marked because we oh. were with these but Mr. Sterling, was your son ever into the occult? Did you recall? I, I, Jack? I don't think so. No. I don't know. You would know. No, him. no. That, no. He wasn't like killing chickens in the back room and. No, he was, he's too busy trying to be like dad. No, oh, well, that's good. Um, Matt, I'm, I'm going to take my own pulse. Yeah. Um, Maybe slightly higher than you uh, than normal. Maybe because you're agitated that weird stuff's happening. It's a natural reaction. But yeah, you've got a pulse. Oh, well, I ain't no zombie. That's for sure. Where is this doctor? I'm How gonna go. We've been standing around. I'm gonna go back to the heads. window and see the aftermath. This has she dropped the stuff. Has uh, have other orderlies or guards or anybody come over to where she was? Or yeah, you you've missed part of it because now that when you're over there, there is actually a guard already stood by uh, by the tray, and you can see another couple of orderlies coming over to clean up the mess. All right, I'm but just the, gonna the yell woman's out. gone. Okay, I'm gonna yell out. Uh, excuse me, uh, could you get Doctor Alan Kelly for us, or yeah, Doctor? Uh, I don't know what his name was. Meta Major Medlin. Medlin, the soldier walks o uh, walks over to you. So, uh, who do you want me to get for you? Sorry, either Doctor Alan Kelly or uh, Major Medwin was Major supposed Medwin. to be. We're American citizens, and we're uh, unable to even get a telephone. Yeah, again, the, there's this look of confusion which crosses the guy's face. It's, uh, he kind of steps back a little bit. He says, oh, "Okay, I'll go and get the uh, the doctor." Sure. Appreciate it. And he They're kind of looks over his shoulder back at you as he um, as he walks away with this, again, this kind of what the fuck kind of look on his face. Um, but yeah, he walks away and you can see he enters one of uh, presumably what seems to be one of the main entrances back into the building. Is there a mirror in the room? Um, probably not, no. No, because we could cut it and fight with him. Uh, this is this is insane. I mean, are these people all bananas or something? If well, we get to the embassy, we are going to raise a super stink. Damn right. Take names. Amy, I want you to write down everyone's name here. I'm thirsty. I'm, I'm are you all thirsty? It, are we thirsty? Uh, yeah, probably. I say you saw a um, guy who particularly felt a little bit dehydrated, so it's probably something that's common amongst you. And we are sweating. Like regular, wedding and it's hot. Yeah, Does anyone right. else have a terrible headache? Yes. Oh. Um, I wish I. Huh. I wonder why we don't have headaches, guy. We seem to be we we got uh, skipped on the headache club. I feel like I'm, 
I feel like I'm missing something. Like I, I, I like I lost something. I got about five minutes before I'm breaking through that window. Donna, we gotta call mom. Let her know we're okay. I used yeah. to be a I used to be a drinking man, and I would uh, I'd miss a, an hour or two, sometimes a night. I never lost most of a month. Is I mean, they could have cut my brain open for all for all I can tell. I got nothing. Is there anything in the room other than the beds, like little nightstands or? Uh, there aren't nightstands, but you've already found bedpans under the um, under okay. the beds, so they any, are there. Any chairs? Uh, there is the one chair that was left in the corner that the doctor left. And is um, it a wooden wooden chair? It's wooden. I know this is a rather strange question to ask, but um, and I and I apologize for to all of you for uh, for checking this, but. Um, I'm going to inspect the bedpans and see if any of them have been used. It okay. becomes, yeah, if you want to have a look around, uh, you definitely do find that there is remains in the bedpans, yes. So we've been eating, etc. And apparently not getting up to use the bathroom. Not, they're not letting us out to use the bathroom. They're not letting us out. And, and no one's been in to clean them recently. On that almost perfectly uh, perfectly timed comment, um, you can hear steps outside. There's the turning of a key in the lock. The door opens inward, and Dr. Allen walks back in, um, along with a nurse pushing a trolley behind, uh, behind her. Um, on the trolley, on the top level, you can see there is a tray with six mugs of coffee. Uh, there's also a couple of, well, probably two or three stacked newspapers that are on the t um, on the top. And Dr. Allen uh, opens up with, "Sorry, that took a little while. We needed to uh, need to get a, a fresh pot of coffee on. So uh, please uh, help um, help yourself to the uh, to the coffee. Um, we'll also change the bedpans and so on. So and Major, what's his name? Um, yeah, Major Medwin is, uh, he's a bit busy at the moment, but he can see you later on this afternoon. I'm Unacceptable. I, I'm moving closer to the door with the intention okay. that if they try to, when they go out, I'm grabbing the door. Okay. Oh, to, I'm not making that obvious. You can move there. Doctor, if this is a, a military hospital, as you say, and there are guards everywhere... Mm -hmm. Then, what what is the point of locking us in here? We're clearly your... not contagious. No, it's more for your own safety. I mean, you you were in in, in well, what sense? Again, he he started saying you were in, and then he kind of bites his tongue again and stops saying, "No, I, I'm not supposed to influence you. Supposed to, uh, your attempts to recover your memory." How much money do you want? Name your price. He goes, blinks, back, taken aback a bit. Uh, enough with this bullshit. How much? Every man has his price. Name Mr. it. Mr. Sterling, you can't bribe the guy. Even if he let us out, there's a bunch of gods. He knows the place. Just save your money. No. We'll, we'll figure I don't, out. I don't, think, I don't think you need to be a psychiatrist to see that keeping Maybe. us locked up in here is is clearly agitating us and and, and having yeah. a negative effect let us go yeah. out and walk around the garden you, you can see he's kind of thinking this over and as the nurse is collecting the last uh, the last bedpan and putting it on the bottom row of the trolley um, he turns to her and says if you can uh, go and get those cleaned up or get some replacements in I'll uh, I want to have a word with uh, yeah so yeah, you just uh, if you uh, if you leave us for a moment, and she, and she what's, nods. What's your what's your plan if our memories don't come back? Are you just going to keep us locked in this place forever? He he's looking over at you and kind of holding up holding up a finger as he shuts the door behind the nurse that leaves, 
and then turns around to you, kind of walks across the room fairly, fairly briskly to you, not in a threatening way, but just so he can then talk a bit, uh, a bit lower voice to you. Look, I need to have some kind of evidence to show that you are remember. You, you've at least made some kind of progress remembering our previous uh, our previous discussions. Uh, I've had this conversation with you about saying that where I'm saying how you've come here eight times. You don't remember anything about this. Eight times. Well, Wait. we we have your word for that. I've got the paperwork to back it up. If I can show Medwin that you have that you are remembering the previous discussions we've had, then he will be willing to come down here and talk with you. Until I have that paperwork to show that that's, uh, that that's the case, he's not interested in coming down here. So he kind of, he kind of, he's kind of rocking his head from side to side and looking at Sterling. Maybe if the wheels are greased enough, I can write down the report that says you're remembering, but I've got to have you on board to remember the, the conversation we've had this, uh, we had this morning. Remember you know, remember us having that again. Yeah, I remember everything. Remember for for what? Are we being brought up on charges? Well, as I said, uh, Major Medwin wants to have a word with you. The ONI want to question you. Well, I want my lawyers here and none of us, not one person in this room will talk with anyone except my lawyer. If, if there's something wrong with us, I'd like to be in a New York hospital. Exactly. Not one out well, here. And all respect to Minister Sterling, who may be my employer at the moment, I may not. I don't want to wait for a, a, a private plane to bring a New York lawyer down to Haiti before we get straightened out. He shakes his head and says, you, you wouldn't have come by plane. There, there is no airstrip here. Uh, all, all visitors come in through Port-au-Prince through the docks. So you came in, you must have come in through one of the ocean liners. Huh. Well, and, but there's no record of where we came in? Well, as far as we're aware, according to your passports, you came in a week ago. Uh, you said they found us wandering in, what did you say, a jungle? Yeah, just on the outskirts of, outskirts of the city. Somewhere near a voodoo ceremony, maybe? You can see he's got that impression he wants to bite his tongue again. Um, you can give me a persuade roll. Um, da, da. 40. Uh, um, 76 is too much luck. Mm. Uh, look, uh, Doc, you said that we've you know, had this conversation eight times. So what's the prognosis do we remember who we are for a few hours and then we forget and then it all starts over again what's from the what's, time period from what i've diagnosed it seems that at certain points um, I, I think it well my initial prognosis was i believed it was something that if it was coming if it was a topic that was brought up in conversation that it would trigger a blackout so that my my ongoing theory here is that this amnesia has been brought on as a defense mechanism to try and save you the pain of remembering something something horrible something very very horrible that you want to just forget about and you can't cope with now matt on he hearing him say that can i make a mythos roll Ooh, you can certainly give it a try i mean i have pretty decent surprisingly and no, that is way too much luck to spend. <laughs> no, Mr. Sterling, that's not going to work until we get a couple more orphans. Does it pass your psychology as well? That it does. Um, my psychology is 60, so I rolled a 54. So mm -hmm. it's a regular. Okay, there's nothing that strikes on a mythos note, um, as far as you're aware anyway. But just thinking of normal, how the brain works, it's not unheard of that amnesia could be used as a defense mechanism that if talking mechanically if you took a major fucking sand hit right right that this could be something that you've seen something so horrible that your mind the only way it can defend itself against what you saw was to just wipe that section clean well that's why i wanted to make that roll maybe i could mm -hmm. but yeah it was not <laughs> i think i'm sorry folks but well I, i'm not sorry but i think you might be right, because I remember 
that there was something horrible, something that wanted to kill us, but I can't remember what. We were in danger. Remember that too. Yeah. I remember that too, and now I get these terrible headaches all the time. What did we see? And you can't give us a hint as to the conversation we had this morning? Well, this is this is part of the problem. When I've tried to, in previous questionings, when I've tried to draw this moment out of you, you just snap back to the beginning again, and it's having to go round and round the merry-go-round again. I see. Um, and it's the same effect on all of us. Yeah, you all black out. Is it... Is there, is it like a magic word you say? Were we hypnotized maybe in a voodoo ceremony? Well, from what I can tell, I, I don't think so. But like I said, I've got theories, but I don't want to say them because I don't want to risk it being wrong and then putting something, uh, maybe generating a false memory that's even, again, just another layer of the amnesia that's trying to protect you from whatever it is you saw. So... Did why is your military leader so interested in knowing what we saw? That I, <laughs> I don't have the appropriate security clearance for that. I'm purely part of the medical staff. Um, well, the if, ONI but if, are... if we've if we've been exposed to something like that, then why aren't why aren't the military out there looking for whatever or whoever where they, where they found did us. this? Yeah, I mean, it's obviously it's something serious. That, that's a question for them. Like I said, I'm, I'm just on the medical side. Do you know where James is? Who? Jack. He doesn't know the name Jack Sterling. Okay. Um, and does my wife know I'm here? That we're here, that our daughter and husband are alive. Have our family's been contacted? Again, there's this look of confusion for a second that he scribbles something down in the, um, in the notebook, which he then snaps, uh, snaps shut again says that those questions are really going to be best suited towards uh, the major because he is he is effectively the person that's going to dictate whether you can leave the city or not. Well, Doc, I'm just going to tell you one thing right now. If my son is dead and you're lying to me, your days are numbered. And I walk over to the chair, sit down and snap the newspaper open. I look over and I said, it'll be your last day on earth. And I go back to reading my newspaper. Oh. Give me an intimidate roll. Uh, oh. Stelling, what have I told you about threatening people's lives? Oh, Leave nine. <laughs> Out of 15. So I got it just. Okay. Um, do, do, do. No, um, he goes pretty pale and just starts to quiver slightly and says, look, honestly, there's I'm not holding back on anything if about you. You're about lying. Your I cut him off. If you're lying to me and you're fucking with me, excuse my language, ladies, you're dead. And you know I can do it. No, no, no. And no. Honest, honestly, I, I, I don't I don't know anything about any oh, self. Get rid of him. He's not gonna to talk to you after that. Does the uh does the name Baron uh what was it, Dirk? The Quah. Aaron Lacroix, does that mean anything to you? Oh, okay. <clears throat> uh, someone can give me a roll for him rather than me roll it. Um, he has an occult skill of 05. 38. So see if he does know it. I rolled him with 65. <laughs> um, in, in which case, he kind of shakes his head and says, is that something about the the rebels or what's the, one one of their one of their leaders? No, it's to, it's to the question of you know. Uh, you're not afraid of us, are you, Doc? Well, I kind of am now after you've just told yeah. me that I'm going to get killed if I don't if I'm holding anything back, which I'm not. We, you know, I personally I trust you on the Jack question, uh, and yeah, I have to understand, that Mr. Sterling is you know, confused and under, in, in some distress. We talked through the window to one of the orderlies and she, it was like uh, she'd seen a ghost. Yeah, six he, of them. He shakes yeah. his head. I, I've heard something about a commotion outside with one of the, uh, 
one of the orderlies, uh, one of our one of our young ladies called Cassandra. She she ran ran away apparently, but I, I didn't know that was connected with you. Is a lot of the staff island local, or do you have a lot of people from the military here? It's a, it's a bit of a mixture. Uh, we we draw a lot of the kind of the the orderly staff from the from the local population. You, you just mentioned the rebels. The rebels. We don't know no. what the situation is going on here. He kind of cocks his head to one side, and then when you say you don't know, he's kind of his eyes open a little wider, and he just kind of rolls them slightly and says, "Oh hell." Um, you don't know anything about what's going on here, do we? Uh, well, that's a that's a question. Do you know? Give me a no roll. It might be why we're here selling weapons. <laughs> I kind Regular. Of uh, which one is no? Uh, it's on the edge. You... Oh, it's, it's yeah. It's... I got a thirty-four out of forty. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you're you're maybe aware of a little bit of things that uh, you've read over the news uh, newspapers in the last few years. It's not exactly something that the uh, the U.S. press um, puts on the front page, but maybe occasionally bits get um, put in there. Uh, you yeah. remember probably about fifteen years ago, so going back to nineteen fifteen. Um, about reading that there was a uh, a president that had been installed, uh, President Vibrun Gilum Sam. Uh, he was a um, atypical leader. Uh, to put it in perspective, uh, the government here changes uh, kind of changes figurehead oft, uh, often as many people in New York change their socks. Right. That he uh, ordered the mass execution of over 160 political prisoners. Uh, only to inspire a whole load of riots that then promptly ended up with him being killed by a mob. Mm. Um, combined with what you remember of uh, growing f uh, fear and, let's say, apprehension amongst the, uh, the US foreign, uh, foreign policy makers about growing German influence in Haiti, uh, the US had already put a hell of a lot of money down there anyway and had a fair, uh, fair grip on the economy. Uh, they withdrew about half a million dollars from the Haitian uh, Haitian economy and kept it in New York, at which point they then said, well, you know what, I think we, you need some help down there. I mean, we, we effectively control the vast majority of your economy. We're, we're going to come in and lend a hand. And the U.S. have been an occupying force in Haiti ever since. That's This is one of those military bases, probably. Correct. This is why it's a military hospital that you're in. And there's been various uprisings. I mean, there's been the, I think they were called the Kakos Rebellion uh, that took place about probably, I think it's about 10 years ago from this point. It's around the, well, the end of the 20s uh, when it takes place. So there's a good amount of distrust from the locals towards any outsiders and particularly Americans because they are effectively an occupying force mm -hmm. without any war. They just walked in and took control of this, uh, took control of the country. So I'm going to go over to where Mr. Sterling is, go to the side of him because he's reading his paper. I'm going to hunker down and put my mouth up to his ear and say, this, this might have something to do with us. We may have, now, can I, I make a I knowledge don't, roll? See if I've sold weapons to either side? Yeah, I don't remember if we, that's why we were here. You can give me a no roll to see if you can remember that. 47 out of 90. It's two points shy of a heart. If I need to spend two luck, I will. Spend a couple. Okay. And I'm saying this quietly so that nobody can. Mm-hmm. Uh, you are aware that you have a contract. I mean, you, you're not aware of everything that goes on with uh, with your company, but you're aware of the particularly sensitive deals. Yeah, you supply munitions to the U.S. government down here, yeah. and you you have a vague recollection that you might be selling to the other side as well. Yeah, we're selling to both sides. No, I thought, yeah, of course we always are. like usual, you know, business. <laughs> That's how we make money. Oh. Do you bring um, multiple newspaper newspapers with him, the the doctor? Yeah, um, I will ask for a luck roll if you'll. Oh, in fact, both of James and uh, Amy, whichever of you has the lower luck, you can roll it. 
I have a 70. 80. So you go. Mm -hmm. uh, 34. Okay. So in which case, uh, they are all copies of the... i get the name of it now. Uh, da -da -da. I never remember the name off the top of my head. I think it's press at the end, but then I can never remember the bit at the front. Uh, the Haiti Progress. Um, it's a dual lingo uh, or dual linguistic publication. So large parts of it are in French, large parts of it are in English. So it's, it's a kind of weird hodgepodge of the two. Um, you've got papers going back. It's just they, that one publication because that is like the main press in the city um, going back over the last three days. Um, James, you've pulled the top one off, presumably, and have just been looking through it. Um, there's reports of things like protests against the uh, against the um, controlling US government or controlling US forces rather that are here. Um, kind of inklings of riots that have been taken place. Um, but you also know it's a very small piece about the fact that um, they're one of the commentators is saying they hope this doesn't spill into the, um, the upcoming festivities at the weekend. Uh, so there's something apparently coming up in the not too distant future. Um, Amy, as you go down the papers below it, uh, you spot a article in English, which kind of catches your attention. Um, the headline reads, American foreigners feared dead on Tuesday, October 28th, 1930. Residents in the foothills on the eastern outskirts of Port-au-Prince reported a group of American foreigners marching into the hills late last night, shortly before screams were heard. Later, bloody murdered bodies of the Americans were, were reported found by locals. Police investigations found bloodstained grass and bushes at the supposed murder sites, and these were later confirmed as human blood. Although the bodies are still missing, Locals insist that the foreigners were assaulted and killed, but by whom they would not say. The U.S. Emb Embassy has had no reports regarding any missing citizens in or around Port-au-Prince, but they did say they were investigating the matter. I have another question. Um, is the French translations matching the English translations in this newspaper? Uh, they are completely different articles. Some articles are in English, other articles are in French. It's not that uh, it's like a, a mirror of the same text. I see. It's this Frankenstein mesh I of see. both of them. Oh, sir. Anything kind of eye-catching in French? Sorry. Uh, that's, that's the only one that uh, okay. kind of jumps out at you. But go, go ahead, I had a question. Doctor. Forgive me for questioning your methodology, but we could sit here all day trying to remember fragments of our conversations with you uh, in vain for days and get nowhere. Wouldn't it make more sense for you to tell us what we've discussed with you previously and see if that jogs our memory. Yeah, he, he nods and and kind of looking kind of looking back down at his notebook, saying, Well, especially as you've now uh, given me that lovely warning about uh, if anything happened to your son. Um yeah, I'm um thinking that is probably the uh uh, the textbook approach, I think, will have to be put to one side for a moment. So let me go through my well. Through I'm, my notes. I'm trying. I'm trying to be warm. Mm. I'm playing the nice cop role <laughs> in this exchange. Okay. Well, I'm, try I'm trying to bond with the doctor. Mm -hmm. um, you can give me your choice of either maybe charm or persuade then. Um, <clears throat> well, I'm going to go for Persuade because I am uh, noticeably lacking in charm or in my life. Um, oh, I've just made it 56 out of 60. Okay. So that's just yep. a standard pass. 
in in which case he reiterates um basically the conversation he's had has gone over the same structure every time that it normally begins with you asking him why you're here etc and he explains it's because you've been suffering blackouts uh, that you were brought into the hospital on Tuesday, it's now Thursday, um, that you were found wandering in the western hills outside the city uh, at sunrise. The locals, as they call, called the authorities, they then picked you up and brought you here because they, rec- uh, they found you were an American citizen. Uh, when you were found, it was the belief that you'd been suffering from exposure. Again, clothes all muddied up. Um, superficial... Uh, stuff that are sub- subsequently healed so no more than very light cuts and bruises say now all gone uh, the diagnosis is that you are suffering from short term memory loss uh, he finally gives in and explains he thinks his or the, what what I believe in, in his words what I believe happened is that you were witness to either some kind of rite that took place out in the out in the jungle on the slope of the mountain um because we know that the the locals they say the official uh, religion is catholicism but we all know that voodoo is more prevalent it's just they don't go advertising the fact and that sometimes that they can do horrendous things up there with animals like chickens don't have a very long life expectancy around here so i'm told um or that maybe you were witness to a very brutal murder Uh, this is not a very safe city um muggings murders uh attacks are commonplace out on the streets another reason why we would prefer to keep you here for again for your own safety especially if you're in a confused state and you just go wandering out there and then suffer another blackout you stumble across the wrong person and that's not going to end well for you but say so I've, I've gone through this conversation repeatedly whenever it's i try and uh, get any information about what happened what do you remember before being found? What happened maybe the night that you were out in the um, in the jungle? That's when blackouts normally start to trigger. It's not a particular word or phrase that uh, triggers it. It just seems to be when we touch upon that area of time within the last seven days before you were found. Um, we know that your possessions at the, hot- uh, the Hotel Olofsson and... I'm, I think with having a word with Major Medwin, we can probably get you discharged from here, assuming that he is happy with the answers you give to his questions. I, I doubt he's going to let you leave the city, but he will let you leave here. And I can try, I can try and get as much pull of much of my influence as possible. Because as you say, we're just going round and round and round in circles here. I think if you're going to find any answers, it's going to be out there that you find them. I, I think I'd agree with you. I mean, look, all I can tell you from my own perspective is that I don't have any memory, but I I just have this feeling, a, 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 an intuition. I, I, I just feel like something very bad has happened to me, irrespective of being in this hospital or the, the memory loss. I feel like something something bad has happened or I've seen something or and and that, that, that someone needs to do something about it and I honestly can't be more specific than that I mean even then I'm 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 floundering and I, I have it's it's strange it's it's that something just at the very edge of my mind just a, a, very- a fleeting feeling Unfortunately, it's trying to grab hold of that fleeting feeling that normally pushes you into a blackout, from what I've seen. Yes, I, I, I can appreciate well, that. Answer me this, then. What's with this article in the paper? It, you said that it was us being found was reported to the authorities. This, this can't be a coincidence. How come the paper says otherwise? I, I believe that's in relation to a, into a separate group. I think that's part of what Major Medwin wants to ask you, is if you know anything about what's happened with this missing group. You said we were found in the Eastern Hills and the newspaper is the other way around? That's a good point, actually, because there is no west from here. There is, uh, to put you in the west, it'd be in the ocean. So 
I did notice a few typos in some of the handouts. That might be one of them. It should be the Eastern Hills. But you say our clothing was muddy, not shredded and soaked in blood. Muddy. Yeah, muddy, muddy no blood. Muddy. Were we, uh, did, did the Audleys bathe us? Um, yes, we had to go up <laughs> in, uh, not, not to, uh, uh, embarrassingly, hose you down. I'm just gonna while I'm while I'm talking to the doctor, I'm just gonna look down and um I'm gonna absent mindedly inspect my fingernails. Mm. Wow, identical thought process, do, guy. Do do they do <laughs> they look like they're in any way chipped, damaged? Yeah, now now that you're looking at them, they they looks like they looks like they've been filed down a bit, so as if someone has taken care to uh, kind of smooth off some rough edges. But now that you're looking intently for that, yeah, you probably do find there are some chips. Someone someone's done a good job of say filing them down and making sure that there's no edges that could potentially cut yourself with them. But yeah, some of them are maybe a little bit too close to the quick than you would than you would normally take them down. Was so it your orderlies so who uh, who trimmed our fingernails? Yeah, he nods. Why, why did you feel the need to do that? Again, but potentially it was a risk that you could harm, you harm yourself. I'm a, look, I'm a private eye from New York. I'm not in the habit of growing my nails long. I mean, I don't know what sort of man you think I am, but I ain't that sort of man. In the quick pause that we've got here, then, uh, I've noticed a couple of private messages. I will deal with them vo uh, verbally. Uh, Sterling, as you're looking through the paper, uh, looking for anything in connection with uh, voodoo or anything weird, um, you do notice there's a bit of an expanse, uh, expansion on that term about something happening at the weekend. And you do come across the term Fet Geed, which is a celebration which takes place for a couple of days and this year it falls directly after Halloween. It is the 1st and 2nd of November. So you will be potentially expecting some, some nice parties out on the street and some celebrations taking place as one, one of the more significant events in the voodoo calendar. And also... Right, uh, Sean, do you want to give me a sleight of hand roll? Let's see, slide of hand. But I got 19 out of 10. I'll spend the nine luck. Okay. Right. In which case, yeah, you do notice that he's got, um, I should probably say in front of his uh, jacket pocket, you do see a pencil, the uh, tip of a pencil sticking out. Reach over quietly and pull it right out with him. Yeah, as he's, as he's talking with Guy, it's very easy. All right. Uh, you said he, they brought in a round of coffee. Are there, um, is that, is that all we get? Is that breakfast? Is there gruel or are there rolls? No, there's, there's just the coffee at the moment. Uh, how's the coffee? Mm -hmm. I think right, that, you, uh, Doc, you good. should drink one of these with us. Mm -hmm. Here, you drink it first. Got to make sure you're not drugging us. <laughs> uh, he, he chuckles and uh, he takes a sip as much as I would like to finish it <laughs> it's mm. yours after all <laughs> well I, th I think we're pretty much done here um, I'm going to write up that you are remembering certain details of our previous uh, previous discussions if you can hold to that when uh, when I get Medwin in here then we can hopefully get you out of here because I don't want you really here any any longer because I don't think this is working and I have a certain degree of self-preservation fine so we all agreed that that's what you're going to do go ahead talk 
Yeah. Major Medwin, we, uh, which we still remember having the conversation yesterday and then we had a restless night and now it's more familiar. What's um, a- all, all that when, when I came in to have a discussion with you after the nurse took away the bedpans, the, at that point you remember the conversation we had earlier, so about an hour ago. Oh, well, that's true for me, everybody. Absolutely. Yeah, yep. definitely. Yes. And you're Amy, and you're O'Neill. Yeah. So I uh, got something. As the doc is getting ready to leave, I walk over to Amy and I hand her the pencil that I lifted off the dock. And she's got the newspaper. I'm going to say, take some notes. Yes. Yeah. So if we suddenly forget. Right, exactly. Yeah. Right, he leaves the room, uh, completely oblivious that he's missing a pencil. And you can start jotting various bits down. We can either do a quick montage, or is there anything that anyone wants to do in the probably about half an hour before Medwin will finally arrive? Let's wait for just a second until Donna gets back. Can quick bathroom break? break if you want to run. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just wondering whether is that Doom the computer game or Doom the grindcore crust punk band. <laughs> it's the right font for the video game. That's what I was yeah, so it's the right font for the band as well, though. Is it? Oh. Yeah. Well, lately we've been getting a lot of interesting heavy metal and death metal and stuff in our games. Oh, Blood for Drugs and the like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and the one that we did last night was actually a lot of fun. Dance Around the Sycamore Tree. I, I saw the first few minutes of it before log, uh, before logging on. Thought, hang on a minute. This sounds like a very familiar opening. <laughs> I, I was playing playing a game with um, Jeff and Ken and, and um, Simon last week, and um, it just it descended in, into just a, 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 a festival of of um, Fugazi lyric references. <laughs> that that just. Um, is is that Doom the computer game or Doom the crust punk band? Uh, probably. I think it's the computer game. I just got it because oh, I right. like the, okay. huh. I just like the symbols, you know, like on the. That's a good looking chair. The lower part. Yeah. So I was really I cool. was gonna start singing Police Bastard at you, and I. I <laughs> oh, that's cool. Yeah, I saw the demonic symbol. Nice. Understood. We've uh, we've been playing in our local group. We've been playing um, Voice on the Phone. She's a uh, modern day uh, Cthulhu scenario from uh, from Peace and Abominations. And being gang members, uh, the amount of times that we suddenly uh, break into "fuck the police" or uh, any other <laughs> uh, any other such song, or uh, making references to like bacon uh, bacon sandwiches rolling down the road, or uh, <laughs> the pigs are coming. <laughs> it's just, it's <laughs> so so weird. So weird, uh, weird. You should have that. I'll tell you after we finished. I'll tell you about a dream I had a couple of nights ago. Which was actually kind of similar. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's very odd. If, if, it involves sever, if it involves severed hands and chainsaws, then that's going to be really freaky. It, it involves gangs, murder, and a, a truly high-level weirdness. That that I can assure you. Yeah. All right. Right, so is there anything you want to do before Medwin turns up? Uh, make sure she's got plenty of notes of things that we yeah, I've been writing to. down everything that's been said. Because if we're if we're suddenly forgetting every once in a while, mm -hmm. she put a note like inside mm -hmm. here that says, look at the note under the pillow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Page 13. And should we assume that Amy uh, has shared with all of us that disturbing news item? Yes. Yeah. It's. I was passing. We were kind of passing it around. So if there's only one direction there can be hills in the outskirts, then it sounds enough like us that I yeah. am anxious. Some, we stumbled onto something. I wanted right. to bring up amongst right. the group, what is this festival, if anybody knows anything about it? I mean, it's All Saints Day for Catholics everywhere. 
and the Haitian syncretic religion, you know, they usually sort of morph everything. So when I was, when I said to Guy that we're going to miss the Halloween festivities, that's big in New York, but uh, down here it's going to be probably, you know, weird processions and, uh, you know, in, in tropical places, usually a holiday lasts for three or four days instead of a night. That it's last bit that we were talking about, though, the mud, some, yeah. that really triggered something inside me, like, like we were in some sort of a muddy pit. All I know is something attacked me. I know that. Something attacked me, something awful. When the when the newspaper piece said there were screams, I had an image of uh, forgive me, ladies, of um, bodies being torn apart. You know, not not shot or even cut, but, but torn apart. Are there wild animals on this island? I think it's too small, isn't it? I think, I think there are wild pigs. That is something that the that the scenario does go into. So let me find the section on that. Here we go. Right, Haiti has never had any big cats, nor are there any poisonous snakes, but the country is home to various exotic creatures. Uh, thousands of American crocodiles thrive in the swamps and coastal mangroves. Uh, rhinoceros iguanas are more than three feet long with red eyes and spiky black faces and are found all across the island. Uh, the forests are home to hundreds of tarantulas uh, whose bite, while painful, is thankfully not deadly. Uh, on the other hand, scorpions, which are just as prevalent in the drier lowlands, can kill. Uh, domesticated animals include cocks, pigs, dogs, cats, goats, donkeys, and bulls. No, we ain't going to find any alligators up in the crocodiles up in the hills there's, there's very little by way of waterways in the country as well right. and virtually none of them can be traversed by boat uh, most of the island or at least this part of because san domingo is the whole island itself but haiti being one part of it uh, is quite mountainous uh, to give you i was getting the handouts ready and then didn't get a chance to share them uh, this is the geography of the area. So this is the Haiti Republic as a whole. Uh, Port-au-Prince down here in the uh, Canal de Saint-Marc. Part of one of the, again, one of the reasons that the US government took an interest in um, Haiti was that it was part of the Windward Passage. So it was a geographically important place as well. So that just adds to uh, the reason why you've got so much military around here. But Port-au-Prince itself the city on pretty much the north and south sides is a valley, or at least the slopes of a valley. And then towards the east, it's the side of a mountain going up. Most of the slopes of, or most of the land in Haiti is of a 20 degree slope or greater. Um, there's very little in terms of flat land around here. So yeah, it could, there's to say jungle forest, pretty much encompasses any of the sloped areas outside of Port-au-Prince. And around the outskirts, you've got the very beginnings of what would be now classed as shanty towns, that you've got um, ramshackle buildings which have been put together from pretty much junk. But they they are more what we would think of as a normal modern shanty town. That is very much like a modern phenomenon. At this time, they are the very first hints of them are starting to take hold. I mean, it's poverty is a big thing here because there is no middle class. There is only the lower class and the upper class, the mulattoes. Um, the mulattoes are a mix, usually a mixed breed. Uh, they are, um, I wouldn't say locals, but they're not really locals because all the indigenous population in Haiti is long since been executed and uh, destroyed by the conquistadors. Uh, you've got the local population is very much built on the, uh, the remnants of the slave trade. So there's lots of, um, the vast majority of the population is black. But then at the top, you've got this 5%-ish 
group of mulattoes which mixed with Europeans and also include Europeans themselves and also now the US uh, military controlling force. Mm. So it is a really polarised and really impoverished city, overcrowded and without much money and a hell of a lot of hatred towards outsiders. Um, sorry, just returning to the map for a second. Mm -hmm. uh, could, could you show us uh, where we were found? Ooh, this is where I mentioned that there were some bits uh, on the um, on the artwork that I think there was a mistake, because there are some parts where it blatantly gives away things that the players should not know. Uh, you were found, I would say, somewhere around here. So it's kind of off the edge of the eastern side of the map, but it was definitely towards kind of the southeast part of the city. Okay. Was, and was those that, are was that the bit where there was a great big monster on the on the other map that you showed us. Was that <laughs> that bit? Um, well, there was it, a big it, sign. Have... There was a big sign that said "Terrors from Beyond." <laughs> oh, I thought that was. Oh, that's not that's not the name of the collection of scenarios, is it? That's just an actual location <laughs> on the map. It, it did actually have some very key you shouldn't know the existence of this place on the uh, on the map that it was said as a player handout so i had to go through in photoshop and say no get rid of that i'm not here <laughs> here be dragons mm -hmm. um okay we're going to plan anything before this uh this fellow gets here well, um, you know, I was thinking about wrapping a couple of bedpans in a pillowcase, but <laughs> I don't think we're going to get very far on the run. I think we're going to get shot in the back. I, I toyed with the idea of um, making a glider, trying to see if we could uh, disguise ourselves as uh, itinerant laborers. Just remember. And, um, oh, sorry, Nick. No, that's all right. I was just making a facile Colditz joke. If something happened out there and the military knows about it and they're trying to pin it on us, don't we need to be vague? At least I'm going to be vague with them. We didn't see anything. Uh, Mr. Sterling, that's the only thing we know is we did see something. Well, we, didn't. we just want to forget about it and get the hell out of this island. It seems strange to me that a, a bunch of American citizens get found covered in blood. I'm oh, sorry, not covered in blood, covered in mud. Um, obviously in a state of shock with amnesia and recurring blackouts. And the military's reaction is to focus on us rather than sending soldiers up in the hills to find out what happened. Well, we don't know they didn't send soldiers. We know that the, they got naval intelligence involved and didn't tell the embassy. Which leads me to the point of them trying to pin something on us. Well, well I'm trying to keep secrets. I'm not so sure they're trying to pin something on us. I think this major what's his name, is trying to get some information. He doesn't give a shit about us. He cares about something else, right? Rebels, something up there in the hills. If, yeah, if, they're, if, they're, not, if they're not telling the embassy, then yeah, they know true. something. They know something. And the thing is, and that, I mean, whatever it is that we can't remember, unless it's their secret drug program. Uh, you know, how much, how much are you worth roughly, Mr. Sterling? <laughs> Six generations in business and I funded both sides of the great war. Thanks for that. Uh, all right, but the war. point is that if there's any American they're gonna spring or cover for, it's you. Uh, they'd leave me and Guy in a leaky canoe, but uh, you know it's, it's going to be a big deal if they're if they're holding you. And why the hell would you bring your daughter down here, 
or her what college friend? This does have one of those things where it feels like they're going to march us out there against the wall once we tell them what they want to know. Yeah, but not a guy like Sterling. You know, if he has some plan and Sterling just happens to be the guy who's here, it doesn't matter what kind of money he can get for ransom because if anybody finds out what we know, it, his operation's going to be kaput. So he'll kill Sterling. He'll kill Sterling the same way as he kills all of us. Assuming that that's what's going on here. I hate cooperating with people that are just going to kill you anyway. Uh, Something's wrong. Are these are these military people outside Americans? Yes, they are U.S. military. It's only the kind of the orderlies and staff that they bring in from the local population. In fact, as you have a look, kind of poke your head out the window, or at least the hole in the window you've made. I'll go over to the door to listen to see, or see what you can see anything out there. Um, you do hear footsteps coming to, uh, coming towards you and the door. You can hear the key going into the lock again and the door swings open. And not quite storming into the room, but definitely going in very quickly. Uh, there are three figures that come in. Uh, there's the doctor you've already uh, previously met. Then there's uh, what looks to be a low-ranking military official. Uh, comes in with a a table, or at least like a folding table with a typewriter, which he quickly unfolds, slams down on the, uh, on the floor, and then sits in the chair in the corner that the doctor had occupied and gets ready to, um, kind of pounces onto the, t uh, the typewriter, ready to start uh, transcribing anything that's said. And then a man, another man that comes in that you haven't seen, he's in his probably mid 30s, you think. Um, has a com an air of authority about him and is in dress uniform uh, with all the insignia that would imply that he is indeed a major. Uh, he just stands in the uh, pretty much the middle of the room and the doctor takes a, a few steps back and goes back against the wall. And then he looks, he looks at you, says, all right, I understand you want to have a word with me. My name's Major Medwin. I've been hoping to get a chance to speak to you after the good doctor here has told me that your condition has improved, so I hope you might be able to answer some questions of mine. Depending on how those questions go depends on where we go from here. Do I make myself understood? And the, the, clear, Major Medwin. The fellow in the corner is typing away, transcribing all this, so there is this sound that just permeates the air as he does so. And and was the door locked by one of these three parties or by an armed guard just outside or...? Uh, you see the door has been left wide open, but you can see the hint that there is at least one person on the door, um, at least one side of the door Thanks. That's, that is standing guard. Right, we'll begin with some questions then. Why are you in Haiti? We have no idea. Everybody? That's true, yeah? I'm looking for my son. Your son, and I understand from the uh, from the doctor this would be Jack. I just nod my head. Okay. We have no specific idea, Major. Sorry, uh, we have pieced together the likelihood, based on what we know about ourselves, that uh, Mr. Sterling and his associates. Uh, and and myself and Mr. Randall uh, came here as a group. Uh, myself, Mr. Randall, hired by Mr. Sterling uh, because we have backgrounds. Uh, we are employed and licensed by Shaw Investigations. Okay, he has this, again, this similar kind of look that you've seen from a few people now, this kind of confused and slightly annoyed look um, on his face. He turns around to the, to the doctor and kind of gives this what the fuck kind of look at him and the doctor just shrugs uh the major turns back around again okay well that maybe answers part of my next question then is that who hired you to come here in the first place you mentioned a company uh, yeah uh mr randall and i work for shaw investigations 
Uh, Mr. Sterling has uh, the capacity to hire private investigators. Right. Okay. And then maybe following on this with, uh, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but you seem to be doing it pretty easily. Um, was it searching for this Jack that took you up to the hills outside of town? There'd be no other reason to go up there. Uh, we, I'm uh, we, I'm we Mr. Sterling's bodyguard, so. by the way. And this is his daughter, and this is her friend. Uh, we certainly had no odd covert operations going on. Why would we bring Mr. Sterling's daughter and her friend along? We're looking for her, his son. This look of agitation starts to grow somewhat, and he just he just shakes his head and look, looks down at the floor. It's, do you, I I don't believe I'm saying this, but fair enough. Do you know anything about this other group that went up to the hills? Because I've got some unconfirmed reports that apparently have been circulating in the newspapers that apparently a whole other group of Americans went up into the uh, went up into the hills near where you were found and got themselves killed. But like I said, these are unconfirmed. There's been no bodies. No one's been reported missing. What, what the hell? Do you have any light you can shed on this? We don't we, know anything about that. The first thing we heard about that was when we read the papers this morning. We obviously don't have any injuries. Uh-huh. And it's also a mystery why our absence has not been reported publicly. I mean, shouldn't the embassy know that uh, an industrial magnet and uh, his party have uh, vanished? He shakes his head, and again, this just this look of agitation because he, he is not hiding the fact that he's pissed. Oh, um, can I? Just, hmm? Do I know any uh, generals' names <laughs> I, that I could just simply toss out? Um, give me a credit rating roll. See if you do. General Store <laughs> deal. It's General General store. Twenty-five <laughs> out of <laughs> twenty-five out of seventy-five. General Motors, yeah. So that's a hard, uh, hard. General Electric, General, General Hospital. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's, there's certainly, there's certainly some that you would be aware of. Um, maybe even with with that role, that because of your line of business, yeah, you've probably met them too. So let's say. I'm not that up on military history at the time, oh, but a, a Major Smith, because Smith is a great, <laughs> a great generic name to throw in. <laughs> now, what's what's his rank? Uh, he's a major. Major. Um, should I call General Smith and tell him you're detaining me and my party? He he just starts to go red. Oh, oh get he, get angry, get get more angry. Once I make one phone call, you'll be knocked down to private, breaking rocks. Mr. Sterling, we don't have a phone, and he has all the power right now. You can, you my, can see he goes... My office knows exactly where we were going, and if we don't contact them within another couple days, everybody in Washington will be alerted. The um, people down here will be alerted. You know who I'm talking about. He walks over to the doctor and just points a finger in his face and uh, starts to say, you told me that he... And at that point, the doctor just kind of says, stop! And kind of gives him a hard stare. It's almost as if there's some kind of unspoken communication that goes between the two of them. Um, the Major turns around, just again, just looking furious. He walks over to you, reaching into his pocket, and he pulls out a business card that he just got kind of extends and uh, almost doesn't quite like press it into your chest, if he, but gets it really into your personal space. I uh, yeah, I, I, I anticipate that, and mm -hmm. before he can get close, I block his path. But I take the card. Okay, uh, the card looks like this. Oh, Jason. Major Lloyd Medwin. Office of Naval Intelligence, United States Embassy, by 
Bicentenaire. What is it? Bicentenaire. Bicentenaire Boulevard, Alex Hamilton, Port au Prince, uh, telephone P0220. Naval intelligence. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, you're still a major. I'm also the person that can control whether you leave this, uh, leave this facility or indeed leave this city or indeed leave this country. Sure, well, in a minute, I, I think... Don't Sorry. Okay, he turns and looks back at the doctor. So I think for the minute that the report that my good friend here, the doctor, has given me has some less than desirable omittances. And then he turns around to you again. I think that having you here is just going to be like having a thorn in my side. I'll, I'll arrange for a car to get you over to your hotel so you can go back to your rooms and go, th uh, go through your things and get you the hell out from underneath my feet. Major, about time. If you'll forgive me for saying, we're six American citizens who've had some experience up in the hills that was extreme enough that we're all suffering from memory loss. I would have thought that it would be incumbent upon you to dispatch troops to that region to find out what's going on there. Whatever happened to us up there is the issue. We aren't the issue. I think you're focusing on the wrong thing. As I said, we've got unconfirmed reports that there have been bodies found out there. Should we've sent you be teams, going and confirming. We have sent teams up there. They have found nothing yet. But there's a hell of a lot of hills up there, and I've only got so many people I can spare. I've only had two days. Uh, Major Medwin, I appreciate that you are willing to move to release us. Uh, but I, uh, you know, along with my colleague, I, uh, I wonder why we are even of interest to the ONI in the first place. He, he just shakes his head and looks back at the doctor and gives him another scathing look. Oh. And then turn, turns back to you. That's, um, that's between, well, that's the ONI's business. That's no concern of yours. All right, look, I was in, milita in the military. Um, give me the card. If we find anything, if we remember anything that we haven't remembered so far, we will contact you. But we can't be held any longer. No, this, this sounds like a like a good idea if you are if you're willing to cooperate i'm willing to let you out of here now what did we say the other eight times yeah, i can have a car ready for you outside in five minutes we'll get you your clothes get you out of those pajamas and we'll drop you at the hotel what you do from there that's up to you but if you keep keep us in the loop if you do remember anything that'd be great much appreciated major Right, then I think we have, and at that point, you find yourselves all sat in a car outside. Just mid-sentence, it's just bang, you're in a completely different location. Guy. Do we remember everything? Like the previous conversation with the major and whatnot? Yes, as far as you were concerned, okay. you were, you were immediately like talking one second ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, what in the Instinctively fuck? just going to look at my watch. Time has, uh, now that you have a watch on you, um, there wasn't a clock and you didn't have a what a wristwatch on during the meeting up until this point uh -huh. because all you had was pajamas so you're not too aware of time having passed but you have a feeling that definitely there is missing time did, did i just black did out wind our watches for us you do have watches now are they wound and ticking or are they yes. are they stopped okay no Something. they are ticking I, folks i think i just blacked out me too me too yeah. Who, who's the driver? The driver is some young American kid. That well, yeah, it's, it's a again a fairly uh, one of the long rows of faceless uh, U.S. military. He is just an underling. He is he is a grunt. Yeah. yeah. So let's let's talk at the hotel. 
Yes, I was told that you need uh, you were getting dropped at the hotel Olufsen. Is that yes, right? Please. Yeah. Oh, Olufsen, yeah. O'Neil, right. I don't have my gun. Do you? Do the we hotel. have our guns? None of you have any weaponry. They uh, must be in the hotel. They better be yeah, possessions. possessions are at the hotel. Yeah. yeah. Unless they were, unless they fell out, of, unless they were taken from us whenever we were up in the mountains. Yeah, I don't yeah. go. Anywhere Why would we have gone it? in the mountains without our weapons? So I have a feeling they're not at the hotel. Well, we'll find out soon. Okay. Yeah. For the benefit of anyone listening to this on the uh, the podcast, um, I'm imagining the, the the driver looks like a, a young Ernest Borgnine. <laughs> yeah, that fits. Mm-hmm. I was kind of almost thinking of the uh, admittedly wrong wrong nationality, but thinking of um, oh, Bernard, I can't remember his surname, who played the uh, the similar kind of driver grunt in Third Man. Oh, yes. Is that <laughs> Bernard Miles? <laughs> Think about it. I, can, I can never remember his surname. I always just keep thinking of him as M uh, for his later roles. But yeah. But yes, you are you are driven through hate, uh, driven through the streets of Port-au-Prince. Anything it, look familiar? As we see, I mean, I I was uh, I was a, a merchant naval guy. I've probably been here before. Well, Port-au-Prince has the advantage of being the major port in Haiti. So, yeah, you you probably pass through here at some point. Um, the architecture here is described as gingerbread uh, architecture and gingerbread houses. So characterized by large balconies, lots of struts overhanging roofs, um, all nice and pointed and angular, and with a certain almost gothic feel to it as well. Um, when they have mentioned inside the, uh, the hospital about that this place had a good degree of poverty, they weren't lying. Um, it's everywhere that there just is the grime, the overcrowding of the city i mean there are lots of people out on the streets and a lot of people are armed uh they are openly carrying uh there are plenty of guards on uh, certain larger major buildings that you pass by uh whether they be what look to be public buildings or whether they look to be uh more private establishments uh, guards and security seem to be something that people here invest in um you are almost certainly uh, witness to as you drive past what looks to be a couple of muggings and at least uh, other attacks uh, they're just brawls happening on some street corners uh, you do get stopped at a couple of roadblocks along the way to the hotel because the military has an open presence on the street as well um, obviously there are no riots taking place or no beatings and muggings taking place right near the roadblocks but when you get suitably far away from them then lawlessness breaks out again it very much feels that this is not a safe place to be. And that you are, after 10 or 15 minutes, the uh, the vehicle comes to a halt outside this rather nice hotel. Uh, You would not be surprised, in fact, definitely uh, Kessler, you would not be surprised that this is probably the most expensive hotel in town. It has the size, it has the feel of it being a very, uh, very expensive place. Which case the the driver turns around and says, "Well, this is the uh, this is the Olufsen. Um Good luck, I guess. Um, if you're in touch with the uh, in touch with the embassy, or you uh, need to get in touch with Major Medwin, or you need assistance, uh, it might be even me that gets uh, driven out here to to get in touch with you. So may may see you again. But otherwise, yeah, I hope everything goes well for you. Yeah, what's your name, officer? Ah, Bob, officer. Uh, officer Bob Forsyth. Bob Forsyth. Thanks for the uh, ride, Forsyth. Take care. With any luck, we won't be seeing you again. Well, yeah, hopefully not. <laughs> but, well, I hope everything goes well for you. And really he gives hoping, you a... Hmm? I was just to say, I'm really hoping that up in our rooms, there will be whatever evidence we've gathered to find Jack. But, yeah, I'm, I'm not paying attention. <laughs> He drives off, you're, walk, you're already walking in the front door. The lobby is nice and spacious. Plenty of fans that actually do seem to do something here. Uh, so there is a nice degree of air circulation that takes place. Does the any, outside world memories? almost seems to... Hmm? Does any of it trigger memories? No, nothing. Apart from it feels like a nice place. 
did I write anything down in my notes in that unaccounted period of time? Ooh, nice. No, everything goes blank um, after the uh, after it seems like the major went so like was again confronting the doctor about something. At that point, your notes just stop. Okay. And we're dressed in clothes that are familiar. We've got watches back that have been wound. There are no bloodstains, obviously. No, nope, they feel like they've been nicely pressed. Uh, clothes have been washed thoroughly. So they Things do have that feeling. But they feel familiar. Oh, yeah, I definitely. bought this tie. Yeah. Do I have my billfold? Uh, money. Mm -hmm. uh, no, that is gone. Figured. But, yeah. but no, they, they definitely are your clothes. Um, and now that you're, kind of, again, just checking over yourself, looking for things, uh, you'll probably realize they are already sweat stained, even though they've been, uh, they were cleaned. Uh, the temperature here is fairly a narrow band throughout the year. It's, I don't know what it is in Celsius, I'm trying to find what it is in Fahrenheit. Uh, the average high is 95. The average low is 85. And it gets about 65 at night. And the humidity is so, probably very high. It is pretty much the top of the scale, because you are right on the right on the ocean here. So, yeah, it, it's, it's just absurdly hot all year round. And going outside, you find yourselves basically perspiring all the time. So it's oh, I've got a nice clean set of clothes. Five minutes later, it's like Homer's Homer's beard returns after shaving. It's just suddenly <laughs> oh, there's there's sweat again. Uh, you have this lovely lobby. Right. O'Neill, you probably uh, have been talking to the staff for us all. Yeah, but find out what rooms we are in. I have no idea. Yeah, maybe say something about. Uh, I don't know. How do you want to? How do you want to pass off the absence without getting any more gossip going? We were having fun on the other side of the island. Hey, if it's a, it's none of their goddamn business. Oh, it's, it's true. A, this is a nice joint. They're not going to ask. They, yeah, we'll yeah. Be fine. So, uh, any messages for us? I say to the concierge. Okay. Um, you you walk over to him. Uh, the first thing that you see as you go over to the desk is that there is a nice, uh, wonderfully carved sign uh, that runs across the concierge's desk and the reception desk. Uh, it is in French, though. So what's your level of French? My level of French is um, 15. <laughs> right, um, I got a 10. You're... Oh, there you go. Right, uh, It translates as staff recommend that the valuables be kept in the hotel safe. Ah. So I'm trying to get somebody's attention. Hello. Yeah. Oh yeah. So the, the concierge will, uh, will turn to you. Ah yes, yes, Monsieur. Um, have we uh, received any messages while we were away? The Sterling party. Ah. Uh, he turns back, uh, back round and goes to the reception desk. There's those lovely pigeon holes mm -hmm. behind the desk, like a big row of them. Um, he looks over a particular batch. It looks like three particular empty pigeonholes that he looks okay. at and then comes back over oh, no sorry uh, sorry sir no there are no uh, no messages for you all right uh, can we have our room keys please um, he again he looks he has this quizzical look that you're getting very familiar with now um and goes back over to the uh, goes back over to the pigeonholes and hanging in front of each one he pulls up presumably you think some of them they've got two keys some of them they've got one key so he uh, he hands you a key, but just the one. Oh, well. Them too. Uh, sorry, sir? Uh, aren't we all staying here? I mean, he, he looks at you as, as the group. Um, that would be... Uh, that would be somewhat inappropriate. Uh, you know, I'm, uh, you know it, uh, uh, it's fine with us if uh, Monsieur O'Neill gets the keys for all of us. 
again, he's just looking a little bit dumbfounded as if you're saying that the sky is pink. I I, I look over at, at Kessler and I'm like, maybe you guys don't stand here. Yeah. Uh, well, it looks that way. Does he think it's inappropriate? I have no idea. Uh, sir, no, I... To be honest, we've been drinking a little bit. It's been a long couple days. I I was staying here, correct? Yes. Sterling. Sterling. And so was O'Neill, correct? Uh, I believe so. Now, what about my daughter? Um, he, he obviously describes uh, Donna and obviously looks looks at Donna as well. Yes. And her friend? Yes. Again, and, look, nods, at, look, nods at Amy. And how many rooms did we have between the four of us? Uh, well, there, there were six in your party. Right. So you had three. You, you had three rooms, right? And you only have one of the keys. Hold on a second. Do you not recognize Mister Kessler and Mister Randall? Oh, again, he just looks confused. Mister Sterling, we don't know these two people. Oh, I no. mean, the, the 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 concierge recognizes me and Guy. You know us, right? Yeah, he, he knows. I, I know you, sir. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I, if you'd like to hand the key to me directly, that's fine, too. We just thought you could hand them all to Mr. O'Neill. He, he just looks so confused and so baffled by what you're saying. Are we all like, staying in the same rooms? Uh, let, let me... Uh, let, one, one moment. Moment, I think what um, Mr. O'Neill is trying to ascertain is uh, whether Mr. Kessler and I are members of their party. Oh, you, you, yeah, you, you are, you are, you are the. He just gestures. You are the, you are the party. Yes. So yes. what's with all this confusion, my friend? Oh. Explain. Three, yourself. three rooms, three keys. Yes. So he goes over to the ledger, which he pulls, uh, pulls back over to him. Um, we have uh, Mr. Kessler and Randall in one room. Uh, Mr. Sterling and Mr. O'Neill in another room. And uh, Miss Donna and Miss Amy in a different, another room. Oh, wait right. a second. Is this a suite? Uh, there, there are three, three large rooms. And they're connected internally? Uh, not connected internally, but they are in a row. They are adjoining rooms. So why are you only giving us one key? Same key for all of them? No, because it would be inappropriate. To... Why is yourself. it inappropriate? I don't understand. Uh, yeah. Oh, just... O'Neill, why don't you, do you have do you have any money on you, O'Neill? Carry money. Um, got a few bucks. Yeah, you pat yourself down. You've got about five dollars. I slapped that down in front of him. I said, "Does that solve the key issue?" I just don't wonder if we're missing if all the keys but one are upstairs. Okay, um, he, you put the money down on the uh, on the table. Um, within a heartbeat, he has covered it with his hand and say, "I, th I think this might. Uh, I think I think I may have a solution, sir." And he goes back to the uh, goes back to the uh, the row of keys, picks up the other two, and puts them on the desk, and then just steps back. And I think I, that's our um, natural. <laughs> I, think that, I think that concludes our uh, concludes our problem. We're going to need access to our the what we put in the safe, also. Oh yes, I, c I can certainly certainly take care of that. Right. Uh, one one moment here. Which point the guy goes, and there's a there's a door at the back of the reception area. Um, he goes through it, and he comes back about two minutes later uh, with what looks like a little safety deposit box, and he hands puts it on the desk, um, unlocks it, and then opens the lid and says, "There's um, 
that there's the contents. I take what? a look and what is the content on you? Right. So who's uh, is that? Uh, Sterling is going to have a look through the box and find out what's in there. Right next yeah. to him. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. And me and Anya. All right. Uh, you have uh, a combination of three point thirty eight automatic pistols, three forty five revolvers, uh, point forty five revolvers, so that you have uh, a gun each. Basically, the six guns and the six of you. Uh, da, da, da. There's also three hundred dollars in U.S. <laughs> currency. How much? Three hundred dollars. And handout time. There's a few of these. So the first one. Do you maybe want to do that next week? Uh, no, there's the. Okay. <laughs> we got about. I call it. I'm looking at my time. We got about ten minutes. Or. Okay. All right, the first one is this. Marija Rome, tarot reader, 87 Rue Marcajou, Bel Air, Dr. Bruce Northeast, anthropologist, 50 Rue Paco, uh, Paco, ADS, National Library, Cult of the Floating Horror, Starpool's Voodoo. Is it in somebody's handwriting? Uh, well, he's definitely handwritten. Any of our handwriting? Uh, if you want to take turns with the pencil and try and scribble down between you what uh, some of them might be, uh, you will discern that it is Dirk's handwriting. Hmm. Apparently this is yours, Dirk. Got a very educated hand uh, in Queensland. <laughs> apparently, we, apparently we saw an anthropologist. And, a, and, and, a a and something about a cult of <laughs> yeah uh, there is also a map of Haiti which you've already seen uh, basically giving you an idea so you've got some way to identify where some places are in, t um, in the city uh, you've also got a couple of two unused tickets uh, to New York on the liner Louisiana Queen in the names of Dirk Kessler and Guy Randall uh and then there's a couple more. So first one. Shaw's Investigations and Security Services, Salmon's Building, 212 East 38th Street, New York City, Wednesday, 15th October, 1930. Mr. James Sp Sterling of Sterling Industries, Sunset Towers, 81 William Street, downtown. Dear Mr. Sterling, thank you for engaging Shaw Investigations. The two detectives I would like to assign to your case are Dirk Kessler, who, from his time in the Merchant Navy, has experience in Caribbean nations. Assisting him will be Guy Randall, a former police officer with the New York City Police. Both have considerable success in finding missing persons, and we are confident that they will assist you in finding your son, Jack Sterling, in Haiti. Our fees are 80 per day for both detectives plus expenses. They both booked on the Canard Liner, good fellow, matching your travel itinerary, departing New York Saturday 18th and arriving in Port-au-Prince on the 23rd. Yours respectfully, Robert Shaw. 10 days, we left 10 days ago. Yeah. And the next document you find, similar headed paper, Shaw's Investigations and Security Services, same. For Port on Sterling Industries, client undisclosed, compiled by Harrison Zamsky, PI, Friday, July 5th, 1929. Sterling Industries is a New York firm controlled by the Sterling family. The chairman and owner is James Sterling, a wealthy industrialist hailing from six generations of old Rhode Island money. His business is diverse investment in shipping, manufacturing, rubber and petroleum. During the Great War, Sterling Industries purchased a munitions factory in Mott Haven in West Bronx and made a fortune selling arms to allied forces in Europe. After the war, munitions became their biggest business. They have since sold weapons around the globe, mostly to Europe and Central America, particularly Mexico, Italy, Ireland, and Nicaragua. James' son, Jack, upon recently completing college degree at Columbia University, then joined the firm. 
other than his son, James Sterling's bodyguard, Sean O'Neill is his only other truly trusted employee who never leaves his boss's side as he travels the world doing business. Several high-ranking staff members have expressed dissatisfaction with Sterling, and one even questioned the legality of his methods. What is not publicly known is that Sterling Industries has been investigated more than once by the Office of Naval Intelligence for suspected collaboration with armed forces opposed to the interests of the government of the United States. No actions were taken and no prosecutions were brought forth against Sterling, most likely because of lack of evidence. It was also reported that New World Incorporated, the Chicago-based corporation, was close to buying out Sterling Industries in early 1928 to effectively eliminate competition in the market of global arms sales. Lastly, Sterling Industries has been supplying the US government with arms for their soldiers in Haiti, but there were rumors that Sterling is also negotiating secret deals to sell weapons to Haitian rebels. Haitian gunrunner Sebastian Senegal is believed to be an associate this act would be seen as treasonous if convictions were brought to bear by the United States government. Well, there you go. Yikes. <laughs> so you Let's have- Let's take this up to the room. <laughs> right, which, which room are you going to? Well, All Sterling's of course. Okay, right. so you, you've got the three keys so you can you can go to there. Room numbers aren't important particularly. It's just you, you do find that you are a couple of floors up and you've got three adjoining uh, adjoining rooms, um, each of which have a lovely view uh, looking out onto the bay. So you've got so a nice view of the over the skyline of what on the ground would be a fairly horrible view, but up here, actually not too bad. I think as a, as a private investigator, I am instinctively going to... Uh take the key to the room furthest from Mr. Sterling's room on the grounds that that's, that's probably where he sticks the Seamuses. <laughs> um, you are correct. Uh, you've got, in the row, you've got Sterling, um, Sterling and O'Neill. The next one across is Donna and Amy. Yeah. And then it's <laughs> Kessler and Randall after that. Thank you. So you go into Sterling's room first of all, because that's where say so O'Neill said he was going uh, going to there. You open up the uh, you open up the door. Everyone can give me a spot hidden roll, please. Who oh, three? Goal fail. A hard success. Twenty nine. Regular success. Okay. Yeah, regular also. Fail. Mm -hmm. Extreme. Yes, another. <laughs> regular. Gotcha. All right. It seems like we have the we have the gamut across the whole range. So those of you that succeed, uh, the first thing you notice is that there's little telltale signs that the room has been obviously gone over by maids. It's been um, it's been turned over. It's been obviously maintained, but it's also been searched. Um, there are little here. things. Yeah, there are little things that look don't look quite right. Like the bed is very uh, one of there's basically two beds in here, one on either side of the, uh, the room that look as though they're slightly away from the wall. The pillows aren't quite in the right place. Uh, one of the drawers on the desk on the other side of the room is very slightly uh, pulled open. So yeah, someone has definitely definitely turned over the room in another sense. Uh, those of you with a hard notice that there is. A briefcase that sat on uh, sat on that desk that you're fairly sure should have more paperwork in it. Um, if you open it up and have a look, that it just seems like it's it's lacking something, as if some, something's been taken out of it. Uh, question in the chat is: Were there electronic bugs uh, at this time? No. This is uh, this is before such things, so you don't have to worry about doing bug sweeping and so on. Although, um, if, the, if there is a great big microphone hanging from the <laughs> ceiling, connect, connected to a half-inch piece of cable, then <laughs> yeah, we so, should probably be careful what we say. 
it, it's the me- it's the megaphone uh like trumpet end that's kind of yeah. like cylinder recording yeah. in the air <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, don't, don't ignore the man behind the air then. Don't worry. Um, how about all those of you that got an extreme? Uh, you see that evidently something was missed by those that have uh, tossed the room over. There is a shipping manifest. Uh, it seems to be for what appears to be a crate or crates, plural, of farming machinery delivered from the Sterling factory in Mott Haven at the Bronx to... Lab, uh, Labardi, I'm probably butchering the pronunciation. Uh, Labardi imports and exports at the Port au Prince docks. And if people, I think Tom might be onto something, but everyone else can give me a no roll, or even Tom can as well if he hasn't already worked it out. Uh, regular. Yeah, regular. 99. Ooh. You evidently were not listening to that part when they uh, when they were going through that uh, report on Sterling Industries because that factory was mentioned, and it doesn't produce. I know nothing. Equipment. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I rolled a ten, and besides, they weren't they weren't shipping farming stuff at a port haven. I I know, but my character doesn't know. <laughs> in fact, yeah, you he you're, was you're... inspecting his fingernails again at that point. In fact, you're expecting, uh, you're kind of ex- uh, looking at your fingernails and realizing it's a little bit dirty. And then you look up and realize that there's a door right in front of you that goes into the bathroom. And you can see that uh, the door's slightly ajar. There is a sink that's there with a, like a medicine cabinet above it with a mirrored front. Um, I'm going to pop into the bathroom. Okay. Um, I'm just going to peek behind the door and behind the shower curtain, as is my way. Okay. Yeah, you, and then, um, you have a look in there. Anything, anything useful in the uh, in the bathroom cabinet. Okay. Yeah, you, you have this feeling for a brief second that you're not alone, that even though that you know everyone else is in the in the main part of the hotel room, that for a second it's you think just before you pull the shower curtain aside that you think that someone stood there but you pull it back aside and you realize it's just, it's just nerves maybe getting the better of you. Um, you go over to the sink, maybe wash your hands and start scrubbing with the brush under your nails. You open the, um, open the cabinet and there's, there's like normal toiletries in there. There's not anything that you would be, it's nothing that uh, shuts a red flag. Then you shut the cabinet. Can I have a sand check please? Twenty-two. Oh, that's a. Oh no, sorry, no. That's just a twenty-two. It's not a critical success because we're not playing that game. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> right. I was. I had something else in my mind then. Sorry. Um, oh, one, I have one passed. Of the, one, one of the several games that uses match successes and match failures. Right. right. Um, <laughs> in which case, it's not something that uh, is sanity shattering. But when you shut the door, uh, the mirrored front again. Something impossible just happened, because when you shut, when you looked at that mirror, uh, that mirrored front, it was just a regular mirror. You saw your face in it, and a nice little wooden frame. You opened it, and then you shut it, and this is stuck between the frame and the and the glass. It's inverted, but that's so you can get. Um, so imagine it being turned upside down. Tarot card. Well, it has an impression of it being, but it's not any kind of artwork you recognise. Hey, Kessler. Get in here. I want to check out our own rooms. What's What do you got? Oh, Jesus. Uh, my, my hand's shaking a little bit and... and, and... I, I point to it. Uh, is this is this the? Yeah, that's the Baron Lacroix. The guy with the the, the skull and the the hat. Yeah, I'd never seen this one before, though. Uh, yeah, this is. Uh, 
Is it is it cardboard? Uh, it's regular card stock, so it, it does appear to be a tarot card that would be uh -huh. part of a larger deck. What's the uh, what's the back look like? The the bland face. It seems to be a chaotic vista of stars. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean these. Uh, this printing, uh, yeah, this is, I, and yeah, no, I don't know. Uh, so not only did they O and I come in here and, and uh, toss the place, but uh, either they're trying to scare the fuck out of all of us or somebody on staff is into the voodoo and I don't even know. They... Baron Sam doesn't have three eyes. You can oh, give me. Sure, doesn't look friendly. You can give me your choice of occult or Cthulhu mythos. Ooh, more of one than the other. Yeah, um, Twenty-one is a success for occult. Okay. Well, you know a little bit about the the major arcana, so you're at least you're familiar with the the significance of whether a card is upright or whether it's inverted so with this death in its regular position so as the the image is here uh, relates to change corruption that as one door closes another opens and that the old has come to make way for the new but inverted it means it's a threat. A, yeah it's a lack it's a lack of hope and inertia uh, inertia it is better to accept the inevitable than to be paralyzed by not doing so I wonder if this is meant for you or for Sterling, or it's just a, it's just a warning. There's nothing obviously on this card that indicates a printer. If anything, it looks almost handmade. It's almost hand painted. Maybe this letter is, press. This is in but our it's... room. Well, this is in Sterling's room. It's, it's, well, Sterling just and to, just to clarify, room. This is in Sterling's. We've room. only been in Sterling's. Room. Yeah so far we should see if there's warning everybody actually we should accompany each other into each of the rooms especially for the ladies uh so uh let's so leaving the facilities of this en suite uh so this was left for i assume i mean you wouldn't even know would you sterling or o'neill if this oh was you're here. showing it to us okay. yeah anyone with mythos yeah. can give me a roll all right, let's try. Well, I'm going to make a roll, but mine's quite low. I I'll spend the luck. I rolled a 16 and I have a 12. There you go. So that's four, four luck you spend? Four, yeah, yeah. I, I don't have enough luck to make that roll. <laughs> right, James has got <laughs> Again, some, something sparks in your memory. You're not too sure where you learned about this in the first place. This may be something that you learned about in those in those days where there's just this big black gaping hole in your memory, but something comes out of that, that abyss. And it's a name that definitely there's been mention of this Baron Samadhi or Baron, Le, uh, or Baron Lacroix. But that's only one face of what this thing is that you've heard of. There's an entity, an entity with a thousand forms that some call Neophilotep. And this is one such face of that god. I, I that. Oh, go on. I was gonna say I go pale white and let the card fall from my hand. <laughs> and maybe as it falls uh, falls from your hand and it uh, flutters through the air, turning over and over again, maybe somewhere in the distance there is just a very subtle laugh that you think you hear. And that is where we will leave it for tonight. Our players included Jason Melnichok, Holly Buto. David Gasway, Mick Swan, Josh, uh, John Dos Passos, and myself with Matthew Sanderson as the keeper of the secrets. We have a Discord server where you can add, where you can chat with our other members. You can set up private games. You can learn the finer arts of gameplay and game mastering. There's a link below. We provide audio-only versions of our shows free for you to download from Podbean or iTunes. The costs involved with the show are provided almost entirely by our patrons. Without them, we wouldn't be able to do what we do. If you'd like to help support our show, please visit our Patreon account. Just a dollar to a month helps us a lot. 
can find a link in the description below. Like, share, and subscribe to our channel and punch the bell icon for updates on our latest shows. And leave us some comments. We enjoy reading them and answer any questions you might have. This is Tom Rayleigh, together with all the members of our gaming club, inviting you to journey with us once again into the darkness for another adventure into the universe of HP Lovecraft, the call of the role-playing game. Until next time, good luck and good gaming.